Ha. Wrong one. Oh no, I'm sorry. We're at the right place. Not sure if, yeah, we're still not getting the whole screen. Close enough. I'm not sure how well the recording's going to come out with this, but it didn't do such a great job the other day. Um, kind of cut it off, so anyway, I don't want to waste any time with that, so... We'll just move forward. There we go. Can you guys see well enough? All right, good. All right. Um, well, start from the beginning at least. Um, configuration management, if you don't mind. Just so that I don't spend too much time on something that is like a waste of all of our time, right? Can I get some idea where we are? Does anybody, how much time has anybody spent like looking at it and knows at least a little bit and just hoping to pick up something? So that's most everybody. So you guys have really kind of looked into this quite a bit already. All right. Then what I would recommend is I, I kind of set myself up a presentation but I don't want to spend in too much time on anything that's just a waste of time. So um, I might continually ask for a raise of hands, should I just skip this? Just in case everybody agrees that, that, that you know, I'm, I'm starting at two entry of a level. You know what I mean? So with that, um, that's me for anybody who doesn't know me. Um, I don't know why I didn't put my email address there. That would have been pretty useful. <laughs> but if you did want to reach out to me, I'm just rpine at usc.edu because I work at Marshall. But you can just, even though I have a Marshall email address, you can use rpine at, at USC. That's just a quick, easy way to remember that. And also this slide deck um, is not like a hidden slide deck. So you literally could go to slides.com, Rick P, and see this or any other um, slide deck that I have. My slide decks don't usually have enough information in them that you're really going to learn all that much from the deck. But um, but the, in conjunction with these recordings, it, it might be good, you know, because the, these recordings will be available on the LA Drupal camp website at some point. Um, so I just want to remind everybody that it's really about me helping you understand anything that I am knowledgeable about, although I'm not a guru, but by all means, please ask questions, stop at any point, because I don't really even have much of a slide deck for this. I'm kind of just thought about like, what would be the best way to kind of present this information in a hands-on kind of way, and so I, I really plan on doing more of that than, than talking to a whole bunch of slides with any sort of screenshots or any of that stuff we're just gonna we're gonna actually try and wing this thing we're just gonna, i'm gonna do i'm actually gonna do some configuration on a live website that is not my work website so i don't have to worry about breaking anything and then it wouldn't matter anyway um and to that regard we'll to do the more sophisticated drush slash git slash ssh workflow um I can use my real work website to kind of emulate that, but at some point we'll have to kind of step through it uh, rather than actually do it because I, I don't really want to make a deployment here in the live. Um, so, but you know, you'll, you should still be able to get a, a really good feel for it. Um, so as I was just outlining, we're, we're going to read, we're actually going to look at some of the documentation. Um, just because I, I felt that, you know, look, eh, you don't need me to, to help you read documentation, but the, the point of that would be that all documentation, sometimes you look at it and you're like, 
I wonder what they mean by that or whatever. So I'm hopefully just going to maybe just kind of clear it up a little bit because it, it's, it, I wouldn't go as far as to call it vague, but until I played with it and actually tried the examples that they give, it, it didn't make a heck of a lot of sense. So we'll try to just kind of clear that up, you know, um, and we'll do an actual real world where we're going to do something through the UI to a, to an actual live website. So from a local environment to, to an, an actual live website. And then, like I said, we'll step through um, what the SSH version of that might look like. All right. So with that said, let, let's take a quick at peek at these docs and, and I'll kind of go over the highlights of what I found interesting about some of this stuff. Um, this first page that just kind of explains what configuration is for, I think you guys are all there. We, we can definitely skip this. But um, how to import, export, and synchronize is... Um, let, let's just jump right into this, actually, because this is kind of the example that I'm going to do with you. So we'll look at this. And it gives this sample, right, of how to... It says, here's a simple example to demonstrate how the site can be configured in one environment and deployed in another environment. This, ex this example involves downloading and uploading configuration files manually but keep your site sync directory under virgin can, oh wait, and then he's changing thoughts. I, I, I kept reading this thinking he was talking about one thing, but, or she, whoever wrote this, but keeping your syncs, your site sync directory under version control and synchronizing that way is also an option. So he's talking about two different ways to do this, even though we're on the subject of using the UI. So what, I find interesting about this whole example before we even read any further is he's we're going to install Drupal 8 and we're going to call that production and then we're going to create another one exactly like and call it development. Well, there's no specificity there as to whether or not that is one of them is hosted on and live on the website and the other is local or if both of them are out on the website or both of them are local. And, and it makes a big difference as to what it would be, what the situation would be like if that were the case. And, and my point there is that if you had two websites and both of them were live out on the web, this doesn't seem like a very good workflow to me. It seems like, wow, this is a lot of work to go through because in most cases where you would have instances like that, where you'd have a production environment and a staging environment, a dev environment, you're probably on a host that supports Git and therefore, it, this kind of a workflow of, of copying and pasting things through a UI or importing and exporting an entire site configuration through the UI seems a little impractical to me. Like, I can't imagine why anybody would want to take that workflow. Now, where this workflow, uh, uh, everything through the UI, it, it does actually have some benefits, I mean, or at least some, there are some things you can do with it that are useful. Let me just put it that way to kind of simplify it. And one of those would be importing and exporting a single configuration. So if you had like a, a, a small site, like not something that's hosted where you have various um, environments, right? Where you only have a live environment. Now I could, and some hosting companies don't even necessarily offer SSH at all, right? Or, have, or the ability to, you know, use Git to import things into your site, you almost have no choice but to use like an FTP kind of situation to get a file up there, unless of course you're using the UI. But I'm just saying the UI might be your only option, right? Because you, you could be working, we're going to look at an example just like that. I literally have a site that's hosted in a similar situation. There's no environments. There's just my live environment. It's the only other environment I have is local. So I either would use this method or I wouldn't be able to do it at all. Right? And I would have to actually make all my configuration changes in the UI. Right? So I don't want to read this whole thing to you because basically all it says is clone and then we're going to be synchronizing you know, between copies of the same site. And they literally have to be the same site. You have to start out with a copy of the exact code base and you have to start out with a copy of the exact database. Because if you don't do that, you have two different sites and you have two different UUIDs and this particular workflow wouldn't work. 
And by the way, this entire workflow really just talks about doing an entire site configuration, not a single import export of a single configuration change. You know, again, I've, I've, I didn't even attempt the full site configuration because I didn't even see the point of it. I can't imagine why anybody would want to do that, but maybe, you know, maybe to deploy a site for the very first time, you know. Um, but to that regard, if you're really l literally launching your site for the first time, why not just export your database locally and import to that to your database on your host? You know, that you're going to get 100% of your configuration. You're going to get everything else too, even the stuff that's not in configuration. So that sure seems a lot more efficient to me. So, you know, again, this whole workflow, I'm, I'm not super crazy about it, but I do see where there are some benefits, right? So, and in this particular screen right here, this, you would only ever see that in the configuration area of the site, which we're going to look at, only if you'd just done an import of the whole system. And that's kind of important because with the the Git Drush SSH workflow, you would actually see things appear in your configuration screen before you do an import. So if you actually make a change on your local environment and go to the configuration screen, it'll actually show you, hey, you've got a configuration change already. If you import, you're going to blow away your work, like, and you that won't happen in a, in the UI. So we're going to look at that too. All right, so. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted to quickly point out at the bottom here that they're talking about a full export in this thing, right? So, um, and I'm, I'm not even going to, to really go through reading the, this documentation because we're going to, we're going to look at, at my setup. So, which is a little bit elaborate, but still we'll look at it anyway. All right. So what's my next slide say we're doing? Says, oh yeah, I was basically going to show you a situation where to, and, and show you that description that I just talked about where I'm going to make a change in configuration on my local and, it's, and I'm going to go to the configuration screen and it's not going to show anything. But if I do that with another site that, that uses the other workflow, it'll show me. So we're going to do that demonstration right now. So I, I have this site that it's kind of like a site I built for not even really a nonprofit. I'll just call them. It's just like something I did on charity work basically for an environmental group, right? So, um, and it runs on a very, very inexpensive host, right? So there's our local host version. This is running locally. And by the way, I did actually use and test that documentation, the steps that they say for, for setting up your local just to see if it would work, and it did. So this site was actually set up using the steps in that documentation of how to um, create that, that clone. Uh, because in that document, they do actually explain that when you make a clone of a site, you, the one thing that you'll have to do is in your settings PHP file, you are gonna need to tell it what the connection to the database is. Because you can't, at least not on the same server, you can't have the database connection be exactly the same because that, that's not gonna work, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. So, um, so that actually worked, and, and I was able to set it up local, locally, and, and then here's the, uh, the same site, but actually out there on the web, right? So they're identical, but one's local, one's not, all right? So if I come over here, and I make a change of some kind that's going to affect configuration, and I'm not going to use the example they give in the documentation, because this is a live site, so I want to do something that's very invisible, no one would notice, so I'm going to actually... I'm going to make a, a, a block type. And I guess this might be a really good time to point out that not everything that you do in the UI, not every single change you make to your website is actually configuration. All right, so that's kind of important to know because if I created just a custom block right here, that's not configuration. That actually just stored in the, in the database. But a, a block type is configuration. Now, why, why a custom block is not configuration? I don't know. It seems to me like it'd be something that, that you would want in configuration, but there must be a reason why it's not. Um, so anyway, you'll notice that all I have here are the basic blocks that you would get from a standard Drupal setup and a block that I created so that I could have social icons, right? So I created one custom block. But in the block types, where we are, um, we're going to create ones just so that we have something to use through the UI configuration UI, right? All right, so we're just going to call this our um, 
test block type. All right? And save it. So have I said anything yet that raises any questions for anybody, or are we good so far? Good? Excellent. So now I have this block type. All right, so I go over to configuration, configuration synchronization, nothing. Now, I think on my next slide, I actually said, let's make a change and use this to deploy it. Yeah, no, I didn't, I didn't make a note about this, but um, the point I wanted to make is, I actually try to redo the documentation to see why it's not telling me I have something different in my configuration already to warn me that if I were to import any configuration, I might blow away the work that I just did, right? Because that could have been, instead of a block type, that could have been a view I spent hours on, right? That could have been something that had a lot of configuration involved in it. And if I would have lost it, I'd been kind of pissed. Um, so we're going to look at that same situation in a site that uses the Git workflow. All right? <laughs> I'm already in mobile. That's how low the resolution this screen is. Kind of cracks me up. All right. So now you'll notice I'm, I'm, I'm running locally here. Right? This is not, I'm not even going to open up a tab with the live website because I don't want to accidentally do something that I didn't mean to do, right? So we're not going to, we're never going to get to the point where we see this go live. But on my local machine, I'm going to do that. Well, first, let's actually look at the configuration screen really quickly to uh, see that there's nothing there. Sorry, I think I have like three or four environments running right now. And this poor little laptop doesn't do that well when I run that many configurations. I mean, too many environments because each, each one's a bit of a resource hog. All right, so there's nothing to change, right? So I'm going to go to block layout. I'm going to do that same kind of test. I'm going to open this in a new tab. And I'm going to... And in this case, you'll see we do have a lot of blocks <laughs> that we use on our live website. But I'm going to go to block types. And then we have a few here too. But I'm going to add a custom one just so that we have a change. Okay. Go over here and we refresh. It's looking through all of my configuration right now. It's literally searching every single bit. And it's telling me, OK, um, warning, you just created configuration. If you bring port right now, you're going to blow all this stuff away. Now, that might even be more than what we just created, because I maybe I forgot. I, maybe I've done something just as part of my testing and I forgot about. But it doesn't even matter. The point is, is that I didn't even get that. On over here when I made a change so to me I don't and I don't even know from reading the documentation if you can do anything that would make that work but that already seems like I already like this method better because it's safer because every if I just even if I just look at my UI screen it lets me know that I need to do something All right I need to either deploy the changes that I made or be prepared to blow them away if I do any kind of an import all right. So with that said, with that out of the way, let's can carry on with our, our import export example of how you could get something from your local to a production site without having to SSH in or without having to FTP in or any of that stuff right straight through the UI. So there are these import export tabs, which are great. All right. So this is just giving me a warning because I'm on my local about this thing's not writable, but I could fix that. So you can ignore that. It doesn't really mean anything. It's just telling me that my sync folder is, is not writable. Um, that's just because it's a local environment. But these import export tabs both have this full or single items, right? And in this particular case, we're going to do the test of exporting a single item, right? And so the first thing you have to tell it is what kind of configuration type are you 
going to do. So it actually has block in here, but it, it it's not what you think. It's not all the regular blocks. It's the custom block types that can actually be exported. And I've got this block. Now, as you can see, there's not much involved there. If this were a view, it would be a, a lot longer, right? But we're going to go ahead and copy that, right? And we're going to go to our live site where we're going to look at uh, block types. We're going to see that my test block type is not there, right? So we're going to go over to development configuration synchronization. We're going to manually import a piece of configuration. And we're going to tell it that it's a content, I mean a uh, custom block type. If you get those things wrong, it will error and say, hey, you can't do that. You know, but, oops, sorry. And import. Yep, I'm sure I want to do this. So now, go over here and refresh. And there it is. So I just deployed configuration from my local machine to my live production site. Why is that important? Why would I not want to just do that in a live production site? I just want to tell you, I am so guilty of doing configuration in the UI on my production site for about a year and a half after the site was launched because I had no idea about configuration management. Didn't know. It was, I, didn't, I, I didn't know the workflow even though the, the site builders that built my site would have probably, their hair would have stood on end if they would have known that I was doing that. Because when you're reading the documentation, it says one thing you should never do is change configuration on your production site. Well, I take that with a little grain of salt. I mean, there are some things that you probably shouldn't do because you could seriously break something that might be really important to your site. Uh, but we've had a few emergencies where we're like, hmm, a deployment right now is going to take about two hours. Uh, let's just make that change and we'll go ahead and do the deployment process anyway to make sure that we keep all of our environments in sync. But let's just go ahead and do that in the production site because that's bad. You know, let's just fix that right now and then do a deployment to get it to production. I mean, to synchronize all the environments, right? Because that is one of the things about configuration management that's super important. And one of the benefits of it is that if you have mo multiple developers, and in our case, we not only have our in-house developers, but we have vendors who are working on the site too, right? So in order for everybody to stay in sync and not overwrite anybody's work, version control through Git and version control through configuration management really helps no one, not helps, it, it's probably the only way you can actually not step on anybody's toes and blow away somebody's work. If you were doing this thing through the UI, Oh man, you could really make a mess really quickly, really easily, you know. But if it's a really small site and you're the only developer, which is what I put on that description screen about the session, that's fine, you know. I mean, honestly, if you're making small changes and it's a small site and you're the only person and you know your traffic's not even that high, whatever. It's probably not that big of a deal. But yeah, but you know, on my production site where we get millions of hits, uh, even for the smallest thing, we don't do it through the UI. We do it through a regular workflow. So I don't want to spend too much more time about the UI configuration management. I think that's a pretty good example of how you can use it. You could use the same process to bring your whole site changes over. If you had multiple changes and you didn't want to do piecemeal one thing at a time, you could just do the whole site. I didn't actually try that example, but I'm sure it would work. And when you do that, and you import the whole configuration, it does actually take you to that screen where it showed you the little screenshot and it says, hey, you, you've got these changes that are going to take place. Are you sure you want to do it? So that's the only time you would see that there's a difference between what you're importing and what's actually live, is if you do the whole site config. But other than that, does anybody have any other questions about the UI version of this? No? Great. So what we're going to do then is, for now, I'm just going to actually close these tabs so they're not in my way and confusing to me.
and okay so drush git ssh let's make a configuration change locally and walk through the steps of the drush git ssh workflow deploy to a production site we're going to have to talk through some of it well we already did enough of this to see that there's changes. I've made some sort of configuration changes. I removed something, I added something, whatever. I've got three or four bullet points there. It doesn't even matter for this demonstration what's there. I don't need to do or undo anything because we're not going to deploy this. But now I'm going to show you the difference between... Well, let me just ask a really quick question. Okay, How many people are using Git already? Got one, two, ah, oh, Jesus. I feel like I'm wasting your time. You guys must know all this by now, no? No, good, okay. <laughs> all right, so cool. All right, I'm at my command line and I'm in the directory of my local environment, right? And we're using git, so I'm gonna git status because honestly, at this point, I don't even know where I'm at. So what do I got? I'm on branch dev, I've got my DB that I imported, so I can ignore that, and I've got something that I'm just uh, something that I'm testing. Okay, so notice this get untracked files. That has nothing to do with configuration. There is nothing. There are no modified files from my website right now. That's just garbage, right? We can ignore those two things. So there's nothing, right? However, I did make a configuration change, right? So uh, how many people are using Drush? How many people don't know what Drush is? Okay, good, great. No explanations necessary there. All right, so I'm gonna say, um, this is Lando, so I have to precede everything with Lando. Oops, not Landy. It's hard to type this way. Configuration export, that's a Drush command, to my sync directory. Now, just so that I don't suck up too much time, I'm just going to say that by default, your sync directory is in your site's default files folder. Does anybody think that's a bad idea? Yeah. Why? Because the whole point of configuration synchronization being in the database is so that it's safer. Well, site's default files is a public folder. It's not a good place for your configuration. So there's a in that configuration documentation that we briefly looked at, one of them says how to change that directory. Our synchronization folder isn't even in site root. It's above site root. So if you're going to take this workflow, you're not doing it already, or you're doing it, or you were somebody else was doing it, but you're not, <laughs> and you're going to switch to that, you want to make sure if that's not out of your, you should do it, right? So when I press go on this, it's going to let, it's going to check all of my synchronization, right? I mean, all of my configuration right now and let me know what's different or what's ready to be exported anyway. This will take a second. All right, so there you go. It tells me I have a block content type, block content type, whatever, test block content type. And yeah, it's all the configuration based around that content type. So there was nothing else that I did. That is literally everything. It takes four configuration files just to create a, a custom block type. But that's Drupal, right? It says, all right, are you sure you want to do that? And I'm, in this particular case, for this example, since I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to go much further than this, but I'm just going to say yes because it's good for the demonstration. I'm not going to actually commit these to my repo, but we're going to emulate that process for the sake of this um, demonstration. All right, so it says, so what do you think is going to happen when I do get status now? Sure going to say, ah, you've got new stuff. You've got some untracked files. Right? Now, in a real world situation, I would move those, that temporary stuff, I would stash it or, or move it out of that directory at all just so that I could use git add all, you know, git adds dot and just add them all. Um, but I'm not even going to go much further than this. I'm just going to talk through it the rest of the way. But this would be, from this point forward, a pretty straightforward 
workflow process, I would get add the files that I want to add to my repo, and I would make a commit with my message and git push. Now, in our workflow, I just want to point out for the sake of this conversation that we're actually using a we're using a, a repository that and an, an an integration to our host. So there's at this point a lot of people don't necessarily use like GitHub or or um, what's the other big one? Git. There's Git Bucket and Git Git Lab, right? So depending on your situation, you may or may not need that. But because so I I can tell you that for years when 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 we were host we for let's let's just say that for years at this point when I did a Git push. It wasn't going to a, a a separate repo. It was literally going straight to the host, right? So I was literally pushing my code from my computer straight to my Git repository on my host, you know? So it was literally like pushing code to my development environment on my host. But for this demonstration, I'm actually going to show you another workflow just because we, we're, we're set up that way and it might be useful for you. You might want to think about doing it if you're not, right? So if I were to actually do that right now, git add, git commit, git push, I would be doing a command something like um, git push hyphen u name of branch. Oh, no, I'm sorry, origin. name of branch. And the reason I would do that is because I follow the same workflow that I ask all of my vendors and all of my developers to do. Don't push code straight to the repo, to the main repo. Right? So what this would do is I would push this would the hyphen u means track this Track this commit, right? Make this a, a thread, so to speak, right? On my fork with this name. So that's, I'm creating a branch basically on my fork with this branch. And if I did that, it would push this, these changes to GitHub, okay? And if I did that, what would happen is if I came over here and I just went straight to my, to my main repo of my code, I would already see like a little green bar here that said, oh, Rick just pushed something to his fork. Do you want to look at that and consider opening a pull request? Now, the reason I mentioned this workflow versus the command workflow is there are lots of people who are so good on the command line. They don't, A, they don't need this, and B, even if they were using this, they might not ever go to the screen anyway. They still might do it all on the command line. But I don't, I'm not a guru. I don't do it that way. I have GitHub. I'm lazy. I'm going to take advantage of not making any mistakes on the command line if I can avoid it, right? So I would literally, at that point, look at that pull request. And since I'm really, really lucky and that we have a pull request here, I can pretend that I just said, I looked at my fork and I said, yes, let's go ahead and open a PR. And if I open the PR, I would get this, right? So now I, what I did, what I've done at this point, is I've said, okay, let's take this code from my branch, my fork, and let's bring it over as a pull request to the main repo. And I probably, I mean, if you guys, if I'm like talking about something that you know a lot about, you should really just tell me to move forward. <laughs> but anyway, it's still not merged to anything yet, right? It's just a pull request that's waiting to be merged to something. And in our particular case, our development, our dev branch, right? Because on our host at platform, we just happen to use platform, doesn't really matter where you're at, we have a master branch, a dev branch, a staging branch, and a production branch. Okay? Most environments don't have a master branch. Acquia doesn't even support it, I don't think. Or if they do, I don't, I don't remember how it works, but basically you have a dev staging and production, right? But your so your pull request, and in the same in our case, right? My pull request is not being against master, it's against dev, right? So, and the only reason this is showing here right now is because of our GitHub integration. So as soon as I create a pull request from my fork into the main thing, we have an integration that says, 
send a flag to the host and create an environment for this. So this is a PR. Notice it says PR on it, right? So it's not merged to dev yet. It's just a PR, right? But the beauty of this is, and this is not a plug for platform, but it's a plug for platform. The beauty of this is, is I can click on that, right? And I can sync it and give it a database. So now I can make that an environment that I can go play with, make sure that it works as good as it works on my local, because let's face it, there's a big difference between that server and my local, right? So now I can go make sure I didn't break anything even before I merge that thing to my dev branch. So to me, this workflow is like invaluable. I love it. Why? I don't really consider myself like a hardcore developer. I'm always scared I'm going to break something. I'm going to make a mistake. So I want to test everything and retest it and test it again. And so I literally will test it on the um, on its own branch. I, I mean, okay, wait, let me back up, restate that. If it's something really, really small, like I'm just updating a, a minor version of a module, of a contrib module, and it worked on my local, I'm not going to take the time to give it a database and just test that that module is working. And now I'm going to be brave. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to use GitHub over here and I'm just going to click on this thing and I'm going to say, I'm not going to do this because this is my coworker's um, branch that she's working on. And I would just go ahead and merge this pull request. And that would, that, that would then automatically trigger over it. It, it would do that. It would create that. It would make that merge in, you know, on the GitHub repo, but it would also trigger platform to go ahead and merge that thing in with the dev branch. Right, so this thing would kick in, and it would start spinning. I'll be right there. It would start spinning, and it would take a few minutes, and then it would be merged. So my code base would be then merged. I don't know why it's not showing this new UI. I'm not that crazy about it. Let me just go to the home page. Okay, so then this thing would start spinning. It would have a little wheel over here, and then eventually it would go away because it would be merged into Dev. You're syncing. I was going to ask about the sync button. So uh, that's cool. So it syncs the dev database, and then you you move. The Not database. database, just code. Okay, just the code. Just the code. Okay. Databases in in a practical world, databases never go uphill. Okay. They only come downhill. Okay. Like okay. Into the sync button. <laughs> yeah, the sync button uh, and. and just so you're aware, they do offer that. Oh. Yeah, but we have it turned off. So you can turn that off. So now we don't have it turned off at the lower environments because there are practical reasons why you might want to do that possibly. But in general, in the upper environments, it's off. You can't even do it. So you import it later. Yeah, and I, I, and I do that through the command line, right? So. And it's a great question, and it's, you know, I didn't know, I didn't actually think this demonstration was going to take the whole hour. And, and be honest with you, we're incredibly close to the end of what I really have to prepared to show you. Um, so we can talk about anything at this point. Um, but I periodically do exactly that. I use the command line to export my production database, right, and then I import that into all of my environments just to get everything up to snuff. All right, and that's not for configuration purposes, although it does do that in the process. But the reason I do that is just to make sure that as I'm testing, I've got all the most recent content in there to test with, right? Just and it just helps with everything. Cool. But it's not, yeah. yeah. But it's not really the way to keep configuration in sync, right? So my next step in this process would be, right? If I had just merged that code to dev, right? And I went and I looked at my dev environment, which I can do. I can click on that, right? And and it would say, all right, oops. Okay. Uh, URLs. I click on this, and this would open up my dev branch. That environment, my development environment. I'd see that in a browser on the host. You guys are so sharp. I know every one of you is going to know the answer to this. If I went to that branch right now and I looked for that configuration, am I going to see it? Not yet. Because configuration just, all that happened is I pushed that YAML file 
into my sync folder on the dev branch. My code is up to date. My database is not. So what do I got to do? Anybody even want to take yes? I got SSH in because we're going to do a, a pretend, right? The nice thing about the CLI is I don't really have to do much to connect because all of that's sort of built into their command line interface. So I installed Platform's command line interface to make this kind of stuff really easy. There's a whole bunch of commands that come with their CLI, the acronym, uh, that I can run commands from my local that literally I don't have to even connect the SSH. It just does all that in the background and allows me to do things from the command line from my local. Just throwing that little tidbit in. But they all support that. Acquia, Pantheon, it's all the big hosts have their own CLIs. And, uh, so anyway, I would come up here and I would say, I don't need Lando anymore because I'm not running locally. And I would say Drush, Sim, Configuration Import. Remember before it was Configuration Export, Sync. Now, I shouldn't get anything back because there shouldn't be anything waiting. I haven't merged that anything yet. Right? So it says, you're already in sync. There's no changes. But had I made that merge of that PR to dev, it would show those four files right now. And then I would say, yes. It would ask, are you, want, are you ready to do this? I'd say, yes. And it would make that merge. And then when I, when I clear caches, I could go to my dev environment, and then that configuration would be there. And then I would do my testing. Right? And if it all looks good, I would go back to GitHub, I'd create another PR to move it to my master branch, right? And then I would SSH in and I would synchronize and then I would test again. And then I would merge it to staging and just for the sake of this conversation on platform, my staging environment is almost identical to my production environment. So now everything, literally everything, every single configuration that is, has nothing to even do with Drupal, like the whole server configuration is really close to production. So oftentimes on little stuff, we put things through that stepping process and we don't even test it again. We test it on dev and then we just go ahead and get it all the way to staging and then we put it through the ringer. All right. And if we were really good, we'd pay a closer attention to Ashok's BHAT testing and we would run it through automated testing instead of all of our manual testing that we go through and then we would go ahead and deploy it to production and be done. Tommy just learned BHAT. I know he struggled with it a little bit and I'm going to have to go through that same process because manual testing can be a pain in the butt. You know, when you get to a module that's something like media or whatever that's got us little fingers all over the place, you got to test like everything. And it just takes forever, you know. So not to plug testing but you know being someone who's guilty of needing to get started on it I, I'm, I'm there so is there any part of this process that I talked through and it did make sense are you guys pretty clear on what the 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 workflow is like if you're doing the git drush SSH version of this yeah pretty good well good well um, we've got 15 minutes so does anybody have anything they'd like to add or ask? I have a question for you. Have um, have you had any experience uh, trying to uh, export like um, like maybe uh, like a, a certain amount of configuration to another side? Like I guess I'll tell you what I, what we're trying to do. So Loma Linda University, we're do we're working on our flagship one of our flagship sites, but it's one of the healthcare sites. But the thing is. We don't need all the functionality for the rest of the sites, so I'm just wondering: Have you had any experience like where you extracted, uh, like on this, because on the configuration, certain configurations um, that's used exclusively for one site and not used for all sites? Because we're also responsible for the healthcare and university sites, so mm -hmm. that's I'm kind of having a struggle with that. I don't know if you had any experience. Something similar like that. So let me just clarify the question. Are you, they're two completely different websites? So they're yes. two, com so yeah. they, they, like when you go to the homepage, one, they don't look alike, right? right. They're, they're different. Is, yeah, it has its right. own sub theme for healthcare okay. and the other one is for university. And, and they both have the same portions of it or, or, or 
Well, yeah. not even necessarily the same code base, but both of them have something. They both do something that's extremely similar. Like no, it's have... exactly the same. Let's say that there's, a, like, for example, there's a, we have a, an events um, content type, uh -huh. and then uh, so we want to be able to import, you know, export the events on some of the other sites. Mm -hmm. So that's what I was trying to get at. Like, have you had any experience doing something like that? Well, events themselves are not going to be configuration. They're going to be completely just database stuff. But if you make a modification to the content type, right, to the event. content type. Okay. Right. So I have All a right. content. I'm sorry, I misspoke. That, that's okay. I get it. Yeah. And I understand your question completely. And without really thinking it through, I want to say that it might be a little bit of a convoluted setup where you're literally going to try and export synchronization from one site and then import that configuration to another site. I'll tell you where you'd run into a problem. If you export a view, for example, right, because views, events are generally based right. on, you know, have a view, right? Right, right? So let's say you make a, a configuration change to either the view for the events calendar or you make a configuration change to the actual content type itself. Both of those things are entities, and both of those entities, I don't know if a content, yeah, content type, ah, whatever. They both have a UUID. Yes. Right? Yes. So when I'm exporting from my local, I started with a clone of my production site, so the right. UUIDs match. Right. So as I go through, when you, if you exported your configuration from over here and tried to import it over here, it might be the exact same content type with all the same name and all the same fields and all the same whatever, but the UUID is not going to match. So the minute you try to import that, it's going to be like, no, I'm sorry, that, that doesn't match, right? However, if you wanted to be crafty, you could probably look at that YAML file and just remove the UUID or copy the UUID from the one on that site and paste it in there and then finish. It probably would go, you know? But I don't, I'm trying to imagine a workflow where you wouldn't have to then manually make that modification. I mean, it, it could exist. Yeah, my understanding of this stuff is you would have to probably do it manually um, in a way, but manually with the YAML files that you can keep it in the configuration. Um, so I don't know if there would be an automatic way of doing it, is what I'm saying. Like, right. You can't just pull it down and say, send it all to the other site. There would have to be a human that says, okay, get me the one that I've modified that I want it the way I want it. Let me copy the, the make of this uh, configuration without the UUID into the other ones that I already have saved in my repository. The other repository for the other sites that you want to match it on. And replace the configuration in there, keeping the UUIDs of those other sites on those other files. So you have three different files in the end because the only thing different is the UUID. Right. And then you just commit it, and then you can go through this work. Yeah. I mean, but it might even be. But you'll have to. Keep an eye on that. On, on you'll have to at least at some point I think go in and make sure that these are the changes you want. And I feel like you would do that anyway when you're making your commits. Right. You'd have eyeballs on it. Like well, saying, this is what I changed in this file. I guess what I was what we're trying to avoid is you know I was looking into maybe like config split um, is for example we're trying to avoid uh, like you know for example I have a provider profile content type. It doesn't make sense to have that in the university site. You know. Uh, to have that type of content type, so that's why we're trying to like maybe we could like segregate some of the different content types that are specific to certain like for healthcare it'll be uh, healthcare providers, and then for university it'll be faculty providers. So I don't know if you it's an advanced use case. Yeah, and I would not be surprised if 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 lots of people haven't come across this and there's a way to do it that I'm okay. that's just I'm not familiar with because I don't okay. I never I don't have to deal with that. Got it. I don't. I'm not. I'm really only focused on one Drupal site. So, oh, okay. Got yeah. It. So I don't have that multi. Multi site. Yeah. Got it. But I wouldn't be surprised if there's a workflow because another thought that came to my mind was, well, there's probably a drush command to change the UUID on one of the. There is. Right. So yes. you could probably get those UUIDs in sync to where that move would be a little more seamless. You wouldn't have to change that every time you made a change. You could just literally export it and then import it, you know, all through the command line and put things through their various, you know, stages of environments. So, I mean, at the very least, there's that. But they're like config split. I forget what that's for specifically, but that sounds like it could be a method to it's do something like that. There's like a config ignore to Right. Don't send them this to these. Okay. Different, but it's an ignore yeah. instead of actually splitting. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's an advanced workflow, but I'm willing to bet you could work something out. Right. I mean, I, it's Drupal, man. Yeah. I just figured you might have some. Yeah, unfortunately, no. It's like, okay. I really, I, to be honest with you, I didn't think there was going to be anybody in here that really knew how to use Git or knew what Drush was. So I didn't really anticipate having an, a, a semi advanced group that I was going to be giving this presentation to. I hope you guys got something out of this that wasn't too elementary for you. But, um, but yeah, that was really all I had to prepare because, see, the thing is, is that, you know, and this is kind of an antidote. I should probably turn the recorder off at this point. But, <laughs> but you know, when I got, I kind of got tossed into Drupal. Like, I wasn't really ready for it. I didn't know anything about it. I'd never used a, a Git repository, version control, or, or any of it. They were all, so I started going to the Drupal meetups, in, in, you know, in LA, to LA Drupal. And they were, most of the topics were pretty advanced, you know, and they were like, these guys are just hopping on the command and, and, and and they're hammering away and, you know, composer install, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and talking about symphony. And I'm going, what the hell? How am I ever going to get caught up? You know? And I would try to pin these guys down afterwards. And like, could you just, like, explain it? And I'd maybe get three minutes of their attention before it was time to go to the pub and have a beer. You know? So it was like, I kind of figured I should, somebody should, at these meetups and at camps, do more introductory level stuff because in general they were not really there for me you know so i said well now that i'm starting then you know kind of be advanced i'm gonna do that to help people you know get this information that i couldn't seem to find you know so that was sort of the intention of this but i certainly hope you guys got something out of it actually uh, i think this one and i should last year did the config split so i did the config split last year I should, this one and then the config split. Yeah. A nice combination. Yeah. Well, so those videos, if he recorded it, would still be available though. So anybody could still go back and watch that and see how that might work into their setup. And I agree with him because last year I think I went to that, but it didn't make none of it made sense because this, like what you just mentioned, I was just barely getting to Drupal eight. Right. And. Uh, I, I kind of struggled through this, but yeah. it would have been nice had this presentation been done last year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Start some kind of combination of yeah. presentations. Like yeah, that. Well, yeah. Well, well, now well, yours makes the config split in multi-sites. Yeah. Uh, make so that, that's, that gives us something to think about for next year is actually uh, not just um, having the schedule based around what rooms are available and, and you know, but also think about putting things in a certain order. Because even in this one, uh, somebody had mentioned that they went to my modules entry level thing and then they went to something else and they said, ah, oh, man, I, I, I wish that, you know, I could have gotten in reverse. And so, yeah, the same thing already happened once th at this, you know. Um, That's a good plug though, like while we're wrapping up for our, um, our Slack, eligible Slack. Yeah. Um, because, if you guys join, if you go to ladrupal.org, you can sign up to get into our Slack channel, and we talk about planning camps. In that. Right, and we and people would love to know what kind of sessions would be exactly to see. because a lot of us know a lot of things, but we don't know what people need to know about. Right, you know? and so we can develop a presentation if we have a couple months lead time about something we know that are going to yeah. be people coming to. Yeah, so go in there, and chat with us, right, on or whatever. There was literally so a whole ladrupal.org. There's got a sign up form there. And yeah. They'll, they'll let you get into our Slack. Yeah, there was literally a whole conversation of like, well, do you think people would be interested in? And like, what do you think of this? And like, we really like, we kind of were just like trying to figure it out, you know? So anyway. All right, well, that's it. I'm glad you guys, we used up all the time. I can't believe it. <laughs> Thank you very much.